Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Hope everybody is well today out there and is ready to get stuck into some more pigment making. This week I thought we would look back at lake making again, but we'd take a few alternative approaches to some of the lake making we've done in previous episodes on this channel. So normally when I've approached lake making on this channel, I've done a very simple method of extracting our color material from our plant material using alum, and then from there we add an alkali like sodium carbonate or lye or something like that to precipitate out our solid pigment and collect it. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use chalk as my precipitating method. So I'm still going to use alum in the process, but rather than using a soluble alkali, I'll use an insoluble alcohol, alkali chalk which is calcium carbonate so what that will allow is for the calcium carbonate to react with the alum that has extracted and bonded with the coloring compound and it'll fix the coloring compound onto the chalk thus sort of staining the chalk and creating our solid lake pigment from there we're going to try a few different approaches with this lake mostly using the chalk as our precipitation method, but we may also use a bit of traditional sodium carbonate. And we're gonna go through the process of acidifying one mixture and not acidifying the other mixture to see if pH extractions have a factor in determining color outcomes, because we know that uh, alkaline solution can tend to cause deeper colors in certain lake making processes. So sometimes an acidif acidified solution will create a different effect. So the plant material that we're using today is Brazil wood. So Brazil wood is harvested from a tree, obviously in Brazil, but also in the Southeast Asia regions from Sri Lanka through to Malaysia. There are a bunch of different plants within this family that have similar overlapping qualities. Um, they are kind of a medium-sized uh, subtropical or tropical tree um, that has a chemical in it called Brazilian, which is a red dye material. And this is uh, interesting wood throughout history. It was imported quite a lot from Sri Lanka and Malaysia and stuff like that during the Middle Ages and was very prominently used in fabric dying um, throughout the yeah, medieval Middle Ages period. And then obviously when the Spanish and the Portuguese discovered the New World, there was obviously an abundance of this wood growing in Brazil. And this led to a huge explosion of a, a commerce trade of people just harvesting all of the Brazil wood that they could because it was used not only for dyeing, but it was used for the wood in violin bows and a whole number of different things and this led to crazy amounts of over harvesting crazy amounts of like dispute over trade there was even piracy happening and like the french got involved trying to steal and um, hijack the shipments of brazil wood it is pretty intense um, and unfortunately this led to a complete and utter over harvesting and destruction of the Brazil wood population in Brazil um, and on the, you know, the uh, central to South America area there. And even today, we're still trying to repopulate and replant and recover from that 500 years on. So it's actually very, very difficult to get genuine Brazil wood. And that's probably a good thing. So what I'm using here today is sapin wood which is the Southeast Asian version of it, which is chemically pretty much identical and will do the job that we need. So what we're hoping to extract from this is a reddish, pinkish pigment. Now in the past when I've been tinkering away and exploring the Brazil wood pigments, um, I tend to end up with some pretty intense pinks and I'm yet to really end up with a, a pure red. But I'm working again from Joseph Birch's book here, 
and we're going through some of his methods for getting the redwood lakes from the Brazil wood. And from what I've read, it appears that boiling in hot water, the powdered wood, is actually the preferred extraction method and does better than extracting it with the alum in there. So the first extraction that we're gonna go through doing here is just boiling. I've got 10 grams of Brazil wood powder here, and I'm gonna go through and boil this in 300 mils of water uh, for about an hour, and then we're gonna filter off the powdered Brazil wood and collect the clean extracted liquid. And then we're gonna go through a process of just leaving the liquid for a few days, because I'll read to you from the book here. From, this is what Joseph Birch says. The he says, the decoctions of redwood contain, in addition to coloring matter, a number of other substances which would injure the shade of the lake obtained from the decoction. The greatest portion of these substances may be separated by allowing the decoction to stand for several days when a dirty reddish brown mud forms at the bottom of the vessel. This simple method of purification is attended to with disadvantage that, especially in summer, the decoction rapidly becomes moldy. He then goes on to basically say that if you add some carbolic acid, you'll prevent the mold from forming. And he also talks about how you could go through the process of adding milk or glue to the decoction to help separate out some of those impurities. Given that the weather is not that hot here at the moment, I'm gonna go through the process of just leaving the decoction or the extracted liquid for a few days to see what impurities settle out. We'll filter that off and then we'll move on to the next step of the leaking process essentially. I have a second beaker with another 10 grams here which we're going to do with our vinegar. We're gonna do our acidified extraction. In both of these examples, he says here, experience has shown that brighter colors are thus obtained. To 100 parts of wood, 130 to 150 parts of alum are used. So basically what we're wanting to do here is because we have 10 grams of Brazil wood, we've got, I've measured out 13 grams of alum and that will be used for our laking extraction process after we've done a water-based extraction. So let's get stuck into the first water-based extraction where we just boil and stir for about an hour to collect our first extracted liquid. So here we are, we have our 10 grams of Brazil wood and we're now going to take some freshly boiled water from the kettle here. We're gonna add 300 mils of water like so. And then grab ourselves a stir bar, pump that in. Make sure our hot plate stirrer is plugged in. Yep. We'll get the stirring going, like so. And we will get a little bit of heat on here so that we can keep it at a nice hot temperature, sort of just sub-boiling. And as you can see, we've already got a sort of orangey red liquid here that has formed. And basically all I have to do now is do a standard sort of water extraction, which is leave it for about an hour or so, constantly heating and stirring. Obviously the stirring increases surface area transfer, so it'll allow the water to extract more of the goodness that we want. And once we've done that, we'll go through a filtering process and then the purification process that I read from the Josef Birch book. And then we'll do our second extraction using the acidified um, liquid extraction using the vinegar. Anyway, so let's come back in about 45 minutes to an hour and see if we've got much of a color change here and see how well our extraction has gone. So it's been about an hour and it's time to stop the stirring, turn off the heating, and we'll move this off the hot plate in just a second. But as you can see, we've started to collect quite a nice sort of rich, rusty red um, liquid here as our extract or our decoction. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to run it through the trusty filter funnel. So we have our glass funnel hooked up to our vacuum here. I've just put a little bit of paper towel actually in the top rather than using filter paper because the coarseness of the wood bark should mean that it's a pretty easy filtering process, especially given that everything is quite hot right now. Okay, so we're going to get our filter funnel on now. Drip noise as per usual, and we're going to start pouring in our liquid. And once we get a good vacuum seal going, there we go. There we go. Now we've got a good seal and we should be able to pull the rest of our liquid through. And I'm actually just going to put a little bit of extra hot water into here just to pull a bit more through. I've got to remember though this is only a 250ml flask and we did start with 300ml of water so I'm not going to pour everything through yet. I'm going to wait till this gets up and we will actually decant, stop the filtering process, decant this off and then suck the rest of it through. Because we don't want the liquid to get too high that it goes up through here and just gets sucked through the filter, the vacuum pump. That would be a disaster. Although inevitably through the hour of boiling we would have lost some of our liquid to evaporation. Let's get some light in here. You can see the color of this. It's this sort of ruby red color. There we go. It's a really beautiful uh, yeah, ruby red colored liquid. It reminds me of the matter but it has some different qualities than the matter lake extract normally. Has. It's a little bit, as you can see, it's a little bit more of a pink tone to this, like, like a lipstick pink tone. Alright, I've finished filtering everything through. I have the residue left in there, which I might actually try and do a second extraction from to see if we can pull a bit more colour. And it's always worth doing with your plant material because sometimes you can get more out of it. It won't be as good the second time around, but that doesn't mean it's not worth trying. But basically what I'm going to do now is just pour off our liquid here that we've got into this beaker. And basically, we're going to follow the instructions laid out by Joseph Birch in the book there, uh, which is basically, I'm going to leave this for the next two to three days, and we're going to see what uh, impurities settle out, and then we'll filter it again, and we will collect our liquid, and we'll go through adding in some alum and doing the laking process from there. But... This is quite a nice colored liquid. Let's get a little bit of extra light on it. As I said, there you can see, there's this real beautiful sort of pink tone underneath it. And overall, there's a kind of bright emeraldy red kind of color. It reminds me of like a raspberry um, fizzy drink, like a raspberry soda drink. Um, yeah, it's a really nice color. So we'll let that settle out and see what impurities we can collect in a few days time. So we're back here 
after a couple of days and this is our liquid here that we've been collecting and it's probably hard to tell but I think there is a little bit of sediment that has formed at the bottom and there's a little bit of scum forming on the top there so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it I've got filter paper here in a large funnel hooked up to the vacuum pump and we're just going to run this through and filter this basically to see if we did collect any sediment impurities like it was said in the book obviously I've turned the pump on now so things are kind of loud but let's get this filtering through hopefully it should be nice and quick to filter through but the aim is also that we're trying to see if we collect any impurities that we don't want. Everything seems to be coming through nicely. Just adding a little bit at a time. Get that through. Okay, just add it all in now. While that's filtering through, what I'm going to do now is we're going to take our next lot of the Brazil wood here and we're going to do our extraction again with hot water. So I'm going to add about 300 mils of hot water into here. It's just been freshly boiled. We're going to get ourselves a little stir bar, drop that in, get the stirring happening, there we go, and now I've got 25 mils of double strength household vinegar, so I don't exactly know what the acetic acid content of this would be, I think regular vinegar is usually about I don't know, 10 to 15 percent acetic acid, so double strength might be like 25, 30 percent, but I don't really know, but we're going to add that in, and that's, as you can see there, it's immediately changed the color from the orangey red, we can turn, we can turn that vacuum pump off now, everything has come through nicely, uh, as you can see there, it turned it immediately from this orangey red color to this yellow color, so I'm intrigued to know, I'm going to turn the heating on as well. I'm intrigued to know what this acid extraction is actually going to do. So next thing, I think I'll just try and show you inside there. It's obviously discolored the filter paper and it does look like there's a little bit of like stuff caught in the filter paper that may have been very fine impurities uh, in our mixture here, but all in all, I think, I think we've cleaned it up somewhat. It's really hard to tell. Um, so while this is doing its heating process, which will take about an hour, we'll pop that to the side. What we're going to do here is we've got our alum and we've got our mixture here so what we'll do is we're going to get a slightly larger beaker like so and we're going to add our extracted brazil wood color into there and we'll take our freshly boiled water and we'll add 200 mils of water to the alum here. There we go. A spoon and stir and dissolve all of our alum up. So we make a solution. And once all of the alum has dissolved, we're going to add that back to our coloring uh, Brazil extract. Looks pretty good that in. I feel like that made it a little bit more of a ruby red color, but it's hard to tell. 
And then we're actually just going to add a little bit of hot water to bring this total volume up to 400 mils. There we go. So we're now at 400 mils total volume. Yeah, I feel like adding the alum increased the color there a little bit. Let's get our little hand light so that you can see. There, as you can see, it's still that beautiful ruby red. Um, it's hard to tell if we've got it richer now adding the alum or not, but I feel like it might have. So now what I want to do is I'm going to split this liquid into two. Um, containers so that we can do two different experiments. So we'll get two smaller beakers here. Um, so we're now at 400 mils total volume. Yeah, I feel like adding the alum increased the color there a little bit. Let's get our little hand light so that you can see there as you can see it's still that beautiful ruby red um, it's hard to tell if we've got it richer now adding the alum or not but I feel like it might have so now what I want to do is I'm going to split this liquid into two um, containers so that we can do two different experiments so we'll get two smaller beakers here Alright, so I've got my two beakers here. I'm going to split this up into two lots of 200 mils. So we'll go 200 mils into there and 200 mils into there. A little bit more on this side. So we have a half half here. So in this little crucible here, I've measured out about seven grams of chalk, calcium carbonate. And then in this beaker here, I have some sodium carbonate to do our precipitating with. So one, we're gonna use the chalk as our, I guess, uh, thing to fix the color material that has mixed with the alum to make our pigment. And this one, we're gonna use the alkali of the sodium carbonate to precipitate out our pigment. So we'll just dissolve that sodium carbonate in the water here. Still using hot water helps dissolve things quicker. And for that to completely dissolve. Yep, we have a nice clear solution here now. Perfect. So, which one to start with? That's the question. Let's start with, actually with the slightly larger beaker here with the sodium carbonate, our normal laking process. So we're basically doing what I've done in all of my other lake videos, which is we add our alkali to our liquid solution with the alum and watch the precipitate form. So, just add a little bit of time, we're gonna get some Yep. Some frothing will happen. This is to be expected. But we're getting our precipitate to form. We're also getting, it might be hard to see on here, but we're getting a little bit of a purple coloration where the sodium carbonate is first hitting the lake which is something that we were warned about in the book, which is if you use too strong of an alkali, you can end up with a um, <clears throat> purplish tinted color. So we definitely have a precipitate flowing around in there and obviously a lot of froth, so I might just keep giving this a bit of a stir. 
might actually just put that to the side before adding too much more. And while we're doing that, we'll go through adding the chalk, which will have a slightly different effect. So I'm gonna add all the chalk at once and we're gonna get stirring. We've added in our chalk and we're gonna go through and give this a stir. It's also frothing up as you can see there. It's the similar sort of reaction, but it seems to be, it's less of an intense reaction. So definitely need to stir this quite vigorously because the chalk it's going to clump a little bit in there and it's not going to like completely mix and so we want to keep stirring to get as much mixing happening as possible. Hmm, this has taken on a very like plum quality, a sort of pinkish plum quality, which is quite nice, but it isn't quite the red that I'm wondering that we'll end up with. I mean, I really like this color. So I'm gonna keep stirring. that one sit to the side for a moment to settle out and we'll come back to this one. Let's get out. As you can see there, we have certainly a layer of pigment settled out and everything appears to still be relatively red. Um, So I think I may add just a little bit more of our sodium carbonate. Again, I don't want to turn this, I don't want this to take on the, uh, we might have overdone it there. Yeah, we've taken it to the purpley pink stage. Um, wondering if a splash of Vinegar will help get it back. I'll take it. I've got a little bit of residual vinegar in here, so we're going to see if that can help at all. And I think we're definitely going to stop there with the precipitating. Just try and see if we can retain some redness but we may have accidentally overshot the mark here a bit. And this is the thing with laking, it's always a delicate process, especially with these red lakes that want to shift from red through to purple pink very quickly. You have to be extremely careful to keep it in that red zone. And I feel like maybe, hmm, definitely not as purple as over here. this a bit more of a stir, but we're certainly probably overdone it slightly. The chalk method is cool because you end up with a very easy to collect pigment. Alright. I'm gonna go through the process of filtering both of these and collecting the pigment and we will go through this guy over here once it's gone through a good period of extraction it's still remaining that kind of yellowish color which is obviously what the vinegar is adding to it so our second mixture of brazil wood with the vinegar or the acetic acid has been boiling for about an hour or so 
we started with 300 mils of liquid, we've evaporated down to 200 mils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter off the bark or plant material and collect our extract. As you can see, it's this very sort of dirty yellow color compared to the like bright, you know, ruby red of our previous liquids. So it's quite interesting the effect that the acidification has had on this. And we'll see as we go through the next stages what effect that has on the final color. So let's flick on the vacuum pump here again. And go through. I'm actually going to add a little extra hot water in here because it's not a big deal if we dilute things. Just an extra 100 mils. And we're going to run that through. Look at this color of this liquid. It's this beautiful golden color. It's extremely different, as you can see there better. It's an extremely different color to what we had before is very very interesting so let's wash this through and get this happening because this is quite fascinating we're getting dangerously close to the top of our filter funnel here we don't want to go up and over and start sucking through the pump but I think we will just make it Add this to here. And again, we're going to take our alum. We're going to add some boiling water to our alum. We're going to add about a hundred mils. Uh, we'll add 200 mils. Give this a stir till it all dissolves. And then we're gonna add that to this and then we'll split it into the two again. And we'll do what we did last time where we'll add one with chalk and one with the sodium carbonate. Alum is nicely dissolved. Oh, look at that. Immediately changed to red. So I wonder if we want to add more vinegar back to keep this in an acidified state. So let's let's do some experimenting here and add a bit of vinegar. Okay, it doesn't seem to do that much. But it's obviously still acidified. So there must be something that the alum is doing which is causing it to go back to the red color. You know, if we get the light in there, you can see it's back to that beautiful ruby red color. There we go. That's really nice. Um, in some ways, it seems a little bit cleaner in its color than the previous one, but I can't really tell. So I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to decant half of this into the bigger beaker here. So we have just under 500 mils, so we'll go about 250 mils into this one. Like so. Uh, that leaves us with 200 mils there, so we're gonna add a little bit back. Yep, that's probably about half. So let's take the first half and just add in the chalk like we did last time and see what happens this time. Whoop, quite <clears throat> a lot of frothing. Um, I'm just gonna bring this in to, to count some of that off. Does however appear to have remained I guess less um, 
purple than the last one and then a little bit more red pink to it which is certainly an interesting outcome let's just stir and try and get that froth down way to sometimes get this froth down is to actually hit it with water as you can see hitting it with water tends to break it up really quickly sometimes I have a little spray bottle and the spraying can immediately get rid of the foam so as you can see that's very um bright pink solution going on there. We'll set that to the side and let's work on this one here. So to this one we've got our sodium carbonate. We'll just dissolve that in some hot water. And we're going to be, let's make this quite dilute. In fact, let's add a little bit here because the Birch book said to Make sure that this process was done fairly dilute. So we'll just dissolve our sodium carbonate here. And let's very carefully and slowly add this. Because we really want to make sure we try and keep this as red as we can. Okay, so far, so good, again. Be interesting to know if the sodium carbonate is actually reacting with the vinegar, making sodium acetate. So I'm just adding little splashes at a time. I'm going to work back all of the froth. Make sure that all disappears. And then have a look. There's not much precipitate forming yet. So let's go again. precipitate formed so far. Okay, we are starting to get some precipitate forming now. And we're still in the decently red zone. So, I might add a tiny bit more. I 
think we're getting close to not being able to add any more. So here's the colors that we ended up with after all of the different little four tests that we basically did. So we have the first chalk one, the first sodium carbonate one, the second sodium carbonate one, and the last chalk one. So these were the acidified uh, extractions. So the ones where we use the acetic acid to do our acidification and our extraction, and these are the first where we just use plain water. So obviously already you can see that the chalk yields were much higher than the yields that you get from using sodium carbonate. And that's because the chalk has a lot more volume to it to, I guess, uh, be a base for the, the lake pigment to go to, whereas the sodium carbonate needs to precipitate the lake out of solution and create the, um, take the alum and turn it into essentially alumina hydroxide. Now in terms of color variance here, so let's look at the two chalk ones first. So both times we've ended up with this very sort of pink, pastel pink plum kind of color However, you can see from the non-acidified ones, the first one we did, it's a little bit darker and it's a little bit sort of less clean in its color. The second one is actually very similar in tone. Both of them ended up very similar despite, you know, this one being acidified and this one not being acidified. This one that was acidified is slightly lighter, slightly cleaner and pinker in its tone. And this one's a little bit, I guess, almost grayer, muddier, um, and darker in its tone. We get a dramatic difference when it comes to the precipitate using the sodium carbonate. We have here, this one was our first one, and we've got this very rich, deep, plum-colored, like almost like a, like a Merlot wine kind of color. And then we've got this very pale coral pink here. And obviously I think the acidification played a role in getting this pale pink color. But I also think, as you remember, I feel like I overdid it with the amount of sodium carbonate in this first one, which led to this darkened uh, color. Whereas this one, I was a lot careful with my additions of sodium so that I stopped before it started to shift into the purple realm. And that's why I ended up with this pink color. Um, but maybe the acidification also played a role. This color is extremely rich and nice. Um, I really like it. Um, and this color is, it's interesting. It's a very delicate pale color. So... We'll, um, we'll have to have a look at what these look like with some sort of binder medium mixed into them. So maybe I'll mix up a little bit of each with a tiny bit of binder so that we can have a look at them. And then we'll do a little bit of a wrap up there. But look, interesting, nice colors. Would I call them red? No, I would not call them red. So whatever they mean by red, in the book that I was working from, either I'm doing something wrong or um, it's not quite what they mean. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode and I hope you found this as 
informative as I did. I certainly learned a lot through the acidification process and it was good to demonstrate the value of using calcium carbonate or chalk as your lake precipitating medium as opposed to just using a soluble alkali like the sodium carbonate or anything else like that. I'm not entirely convinced that I got the acidification steps right because I ended up with such similar tones in the end and this may have something to do with either working on a small scale, not diluting enough, uh, I don't know, lots of different little factors into that and I think I definitely need to do some more playing around with the acidification of my extracts and things like that. But all in all, it was interesting and I have definitely been exploring the chalk precipitation method a lot more because it does yield a slightly larger amount and it does tend to be easier to do post-processing. So washing, cleaning, re-grinding, the chalk tends to powderize uh, quite nicely as opposed to the pigment that's precipitated with just the alkali. Um, so I definitely think there's value to the chalk there. I would have to do some tests. I don't know if the chalk pigments are more or less light fast than the other precipitation methods. Um, these are all things that I'm trying to explore because I've started development on my new online course. So I'm going to do a full sort of comprehensive lake making course that should be coming within the next, I don't know, by the middle of the year, hopefully, three to six months. Um, it's just an early development phase at the moment. Um, and if you're interested, I still have my watercolor course there, which you just have to follow the links in this video too. But yeah, so I'm gonna keep diving deeper and deeper into lake making. Um, you'll see bits and pieces of it here on the channel. And we still gotta get back to finishing our Maya Blue experiments. Um, I've just been sidetracked from those ones. It's kind of the way when you hit a little bit of a hurdle, you sort of stop and you need a bit of time to think about it before coming back to trying again. But anyway, that's that for today. Um, I know I said I was going to show you some of these pigments mixed in with binder, but this video has been running for quite a long time already. So I think I'll just stop it there now. And um, if I relook at the Brazil wood, we'll look at how it looks in binders, but you get the point. It'll just be a more saturated version than the colors you just saw. Anyway, till next time, take care and I uh, hope to see you next time.